So we've been talking about ways to combine functions with each other. Um, I'm going to get a couple of functions up here. So as we start to plug um, plug things into functions, for example, if I go g of 3, you know, I, the 3 is the input. So it's 4 times whatever that input is plus 2. And this I can evaluate. You know, I can get it down to a single value. Um, but, you know, instead of 3, if I wanted to use uh, 10, that's just the input, whatever the input is. Uh, if I wanted to use a, a square, G, G of square, square is my input, it'd be 4 squares plus 2. Or if I wanted to go uh, smiley face, G of smiley face is 4 smiley faces plus 2. What, whatever I put into here is my input, and it replaces the X. The X is, uh, the X is a dummy variable. So thinking about that, then, I could say something like g of uh, 2a plus 5. Notice that would be 4 2a plus 5 times 2. That's my input. Whatever I put into g replaces the input in the other one. So what's really interesting to me is now I can do something like um, g of f of x. Or, or let's just do g of f of 2. So if I do this, I'm going to start on the inside. Notice what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking 2 and I'm plugging it into f. I'm getting some answer. And then whatever that answer is gets plugged right into g. These, these type of combinations, instead of doing them separately, uh, you're running them in a line. You're like hooking the output of one right into the input of the other, and then I'll get my answer out of that. So let's actually do this and, and see what happens. So um, f of 2 is, let's see, it's 2 times input squared minus 3 times input plus 1. So 2 squared is 4. So that's 8 minus 6 plus 1. 8 minus 6 is 2, plus 1 is 3. So f of 2 is 3. So this is the same as saying g of 3, because we've evaluated f of 2. So now I plug 3 into g. 4 times 3 plus 2, 12 plus 2 is 14. And if I go the other way, if I go f of g of 2, notice my order is different. Now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm plugging 2 into that G machine, and then its output is put right into that F, and it spits out an answer. So if I do this one, G of 2, let's see, I plug 2 into G, that's 4 times 2 plus 2, 8 plus 2 is 10. So this would be the same as f of 10, I didn't change the color, oh well, uh, which is, f is 2 times input squared minus 3 times input plus 1. So 10 squared is 100, 100 times 2 is 200, minus 30 plus 1. Um, that's 170 plus 1, 171. Notice I get different answers. My, my order is important on these. So this is this idea of, of taking a function and plugging it into another function or hooking them up so they, they run in this, in this serial way. I'm going to do a little racing and then we'll get some notation up here, get some more practice. So I did f of g of x, plugging g into f. I also did g of f of x. So that notation, the, we can write it this way. We also write it this way, f of g of x, or I could say g of f of x. Now be careful when you, um, when you see these, this is like an open circle that's in the middle. It's not a dot. A dot would be a multiplication. This open circle means we're plugging one function into, a, into another function. And I did it a couple times already with, with number. Um, you can just do it with, with x, too. So figure out what um, 
f of g of x would be. So that is f of g of x. That is me plugging g into f. So let me think about what this means. f of, what's g of x? g of x is, is 4x plus 2. So that's my input. That's what I'm going to put into f. So this needs to go into and take the place of any x in the other equation. Because x is just an input holder. Um, f of, my, of, of something is 2 times input squared minus 3 times input plus 1. And my input just happens to be 4x plus 2. So I'm going to put that in here. And I'm going to put that in here. Again, 2 times input squared plus, uh, I'm sorry, minus 3 times input plus 1. So now I'm going to do some simplifying to figure out what this ends up being. Um, and just as a, a little side note, if I square this, if I go uh, 4x plus 2 squared, um, squaring mean times itself. So I actually have to multiply it out. Most people... Not most people. Some people would say it's 16x squared plus 4. But I do like the 16x squared. And I do like the 4. But there's a middle term as well. Because I have to do that multiplication and that multiplication. So each of these is an 8x. So it's plus 16x. So this is 16x squared plus 16x plus 4. And this is still this minus 3 times that plus 1. I'm going to keep going to simplify this. So I'm going to distribute that 2 into there. So that's 32x squared plus 32x plus 8. And then that negative 3 gets distributed into there. So negative 12x minus 6. Be careful you take the negative with. Plus 1. Combine up some like terms, I get... 32x squared plus uh, 32x minus 12x is 20x. 8 minus 6 is 2 plus 1 is 3. So that's what f of g of x would be. So let's take a peek at what g of x would be. It's going to be a little less complicated. Just make a little room. Well, let's see, this would be g of f of x. So we're plugging f into g. So we're going g of, what is f? f is that. 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. So notice that, uh, just like with the other way, that is our input into, into g. So that will take the place of x in g. So g is 4 times whatever the input is plus 2. The input just happens to be this 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. And so now I'll simplify it, distribute that 4 into there. 8x squared minus 12x plus 4 plus 2. Combine some like terms. And I get 8x squared minus 12x plus 6. So that's what g of f would be. And notice they're, they're, they're different. Right? They're not the same. So the, the equivalency isn't there. Order is important on these. Do a couple more examples. So let's go ahead and do g of h of x. Notice that would be g of h of x. So now I can go, that's g, what is h of x? It's x minus 3. So now this is g of x minus 3. So x minus 3 is going to get plugged into g. g is 4 times input plus 2. The input happens to be x minus 3. So simplify, distribute that. 4x minus 12 plus 2. That'll be 4x minus 10. And if we go the, the other route, we could say h of g of x. That's h 
of g of x. <laughs> so we know what g of x is. g of x is 4x plus 2. And now that's our input into h. So that's just going to take the place of that x. That x is a placeholder for input. So h is input minus 3. The input happens to be 4x plus 2. So as I simplify this, 4x plus 2 minus 3, 4x minus 1. So that's the expression that this simplifies down to. One thing that I see that I see some people do that it's a really super common mistake, and I um, I understand why why it happens. Um, f of h of x, f of h of x. So that would be f of what's h of x? X minus three. Um, so here's the here's the mistake. We know that we're we're supposed to plug this into here, and what I've been emphasizing is how this takes the place of these x's. These x's are just placeholders. Um, sometimes I'll see people do stuff like this, and I, I almost hesitate to do it because I don't want to show you something wrong, but don't do this. <laughs> no, this is a mistake. Um, some people will go 2, and then they'll do something like, well, it's just x squared times x minus 3. Minus 3, and it's just x times x minus 3. So notice what they're doing wrong, and it's, and it's right here. They're not substituting. Um, remember that this x value, like I've said before, is a placeholder. So really, um, what we're doing is we're taking the value and replacing that x with it. Um, think of f of x. And we use x as just convenient, but think of it as 2 times input squared minus 3 times input plus 1. That x is just a placeholder. Once you replace it, it's gone. So this x minus 3 is what got put in there. This x minus 3 is what got put in there. The x that's there came from here. It's, it's part of what's taking the place of that x. All right, oh, so now, now those are big yeses um, instead of no's. I know I have to do this and it's kind of dumb, but yes, yes, yes.